Hey, um, today we are going to be talking about one of my very favorite topics, if not the favorite. Yeah, maybe it's the favorite, I should be honest. Um, so the topic is how to become so undeniable to the industry, to casting, to directors, to producers, that they are ready to hunt you down. So I'm really not um, talking about, oh, you do the job and they hire you. I'm talking uh, about a whole different ball game, that you become so instinctive, in the zone, and utterly free, and it's so rare that you start getting known for that and that people will see you, and even if you don't fit the role, they will rewrite it for you, they will change the character for you, they will add lines for you, they will do whatever it takes to have you. They will sign you before testing you, they will do crazy things because they just have to have you. And that is a thing. You can become undeniable when your instinct is totally alive. It's such a rare commodity that um, casting offices and the industry in, in general is really crazy about it. Before we go into the details of this, I want you guys, and this is going to be fun, I want you guys to um, think for a second about The Notebook. Do you guys remember this wonderful romantic movie that launched Ryan Gosling's and um, Rachel McAdams' huge careers? I mean, they had done stuff before, obviously, but that was the huge break. Um, so if you guys know it, drop a yes. If you haven't seen it, I strongly suggest that you stop everything, turn this Facebook Live over and uh, off and go see it, go watch it. Um, so the reason I want to talk about um, The Notebook and then Chandler Bing after that is because I want you guys to think a little bit about, if you remember the story, it's a love story between Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams. He's the poor guy. He's the rich girl. They meet, and people usually remember the beginning of the movie because Ryan Gosling is so charming and so impulsive and so fun that... Um, you know, he's pretty much irresistible, and she tries to resist him a little bit, but pretty much they fall madly in love, and they have this amazing relationship, but the um, the, the discrepancies between, between where they come from and the parents getting involved, um, and the fact that Rachel McAdams' character, I think her name is Allie, and his name is Noah in the movie, needs to move back to her hometown means that they separate. And so that, that is not the part that I actually want us to talk about, but I actually want us to talk about the end of the movie. So she's moved away. Um, she met another man, Mr. Perfect kind of guy. He's glamorous. He's shiny. He's everything her parents want. He has money. Um, he has a cool job. He has all the ticks on the sheet, right? He's Mr. Perfect. And um, she marries him, but because of luck, I guess, um, the character that Rachel McAdams plays realizes that um, Noah, Ryan Gosling, is not far, has moved forward, has built the house that they were talking about when they were young. And so she has to see him one last time before she gets married. And this is where it becomes interesting because the character of Noah, Ryan Gosling, has been going down since he lost her. So he has become a loner, a drinker. Um, he has really gone within into his darkness and that is where he is at. He is very authentically in a dark place, genuinely in a dark place. And yet, that is what is so attractive. So we're all, when we're watching the movie, we have Rachel McAdams, the you know great first character, and then she has this Mr. Perfect that perfectly fits her and her parents and everything she could ever possibly want. And then there is this Noah, Ryan Gosling character, who doesn't have the right job at all, doesn't have the money, doesn't have anything glamorous, shiny going on, and yet he is so attractive to her 
and to us, the audience, we really want them to be together. We really want her to choose him because he is authentically being himself. He has gone within. And because he has gone within and he has accepted the cracks he found there, he went all the way, all the way to the bottom. And he is now this fuller, more authentic, and yes, darker character. And he is extremely attractive to the audience and to her. So she has doubts because she's hesitating in between both. And yet, of course, she ends up choosing him against all odds. He has nothing right on paper. And yet he's just the more genuine, fuller, complete human being because he has gone within right and now i want us to contrast this um with chandler bing and so if you remember chandler bing in friends and i i chose two really very big references just to make sure that most of you guys um would have seen these references so if you remember chandler bing in friends before he is with monica and they have an amazing couple but before they get together he's the character he's the guy who um, is really struggling with the girls. So he's usually trying to always put his best face on and best behavior and best jokes, and it never works out. And there's this episode that is based only on that. And so Chandler spends the whole entire episode with a, I think she's an underwear model or something, in a cash dispenser room that is locked up. And he's alone with her, I think, the whole night. And he spends the whole episode trying to come up with great ways um, to be attractive. So he comes up with all these weird, ridiculous, lame, cheap, hilarious ways that are absolutely not attractive. She's not attractive, uh, attracted to him. We don't even want her to be attracted to him. We just think it's hilarious because of how absurd it is. And so what I want you guys to see here in terms of acting is really that instinct and the going within, that is what is attractive. And it's not something glamorous. It's not something you put on. It's not something you can manipulate. It's not a shiny thing. It's not something you can try and do. So Chan Bing is trying as hard as he can, and it's a total failure. And then we have Noah's uh, character, Ryan Gosling's character in The Notebook, and he is really just being authentic and being himself and having gone within, and that is extremely attractive. So the first thing that I want you to remi remember in terms of being completely undeniable in an audition room, it's not you trying all these tricks um, to be attractive because you 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 will repulse. It's really the opposite. It's really going within that will make you extremely authentic human and therefore alive and attractive. Uh, instinct and authenticity and your humanity will be anything. So even in the notebook, when you look at Mr. Perfect and then there's the Ryan Gosling guy, Ryan Gosling guy, all the Noah character, only has one thing going on. He's fully human. The other guy has all the other cards on the table and and she ends up choosing Ryan Gosling because he is the one that went within, the one that is just completely vulnerably human and that is what is beautiful and it's a very rare commodity. I The thing is I really never want the Chandler Bing situation to happen to you guys. When you're in the room I don't want you guys to feel like you have to do all these things to become attractive because it's a horrible sensation to have and it's a horrible thing to watch because it reminds us of our own ways that we do this and that's where a casting director will go no I don't know what's up but no it, it's painful to watch when people do that um, so the only way to go within is for you to really be okay with your darker co colors and therefore to build the pure version of yourself. You have to train. It's a profession and you can't expect 
to be at your best and to be your greatest if you don't train your instrument. But I want to say a couple of words about what type of training. Because the way for you to get inside, to get to use the darker colors, to get comfortable with all of those textures, is for you to train it. But I'm not talking about traditional training. I'm not talking about traditional acting class where you go class after class and it never really works out, but you keep learning new methods or other methods if you change classes of the right way to approach a scene or the right way to make a choice or how to break down the scene so that you always book uh, in like eight steps. The problem with those approaches is that they're external and they pull you further and further away from your instrument, from the within, from the inside that you absolutely have to cultivate. That's where the gold is. That's where you become very attractive. So the type of training that will not cost you all your money and all your time and will not actually give you your instinct back is a training where you actually do the reverse, where you unlearn. You get rid of all these external approaches and methods. And when you start diving into all the life and the yumminess and the humanity, it's really a humanistic approach here, the humanity that you have in there. So it's on one side unlearning, on the other side it's really rebuilding what you were born with because if you look at kids kids are very attractive right they're very irresistible and undeniable they're completely free and completely instinctive so it's really going back to that there's nothing to learn there's only unlearning what people have put on top of it that prevents you from accessing that wonderful wonderful human instrument and you muscle it back up so that you can actually rely on it professionally, right? So that's the type of training that will not take all of your time and not take all of your money because once you do it, well, it's done. You're, you're, you've gotten rid of the stuff that's in the way and you rebuild yourself up and, and then you're alive and then you can use that. So that's pretty amazing. And if you have been taking class after class, you have been that has the type of classes that teach you you have been misled kind of away from your core away from your inside away from you and therefore you can't access yourself at all or fully anymore and that is the problem and that's what you need to restore but there's nothing else that you need to learn um so i also want to say a couple of things all this type of work is work that you do before the audition, right? So you're just before the audition or completely like before even going to an audition. You want to do that type of training before you work, basically. Because when you work, you're supposed to be busy and concerned about the character's needs, not about your needs. So if you start pulling from your hat all of your tricks and methods as you act, well, you're, you're not doing your job. You're not taking care of your character and getting what they want. You're taking care of yourself. And so that's really not what the job description is. So um, also what I want to say is I often see um, actors who consider training as something that they do like once a year or, you know, because it's the low season or something. And so that's when they train their instrument. And the rest of the year they don't do it or they only want coaching when they have an audition. But how could that possibly give you the results that you're expecting? What happens when an opportunity knocks and you haven't trained? How can you expect to show up in your full potential, fully flexible, able to reach extreme emotions, et cetera, et cetera, if you're not constantly training? There's not, there's not a single industry in this world where people are at the top and they're not training. Whether you're in sports, in science, in law, in whatever, you have to keep going at it. You have to, you have to sharpen your instrument, whatever your instrument is. And in this case is your, is your emotional instrument, your, impulsive instrument, your instinct, your purpose, all of that stuff 
needs to be like a race car. If not, you can't expect to work and to have it all go well if it isn't. Another thing that I see a lot of actors do, um, and, and please drop your comments in here if you feel like you've, you've done this before. Um, so they send a, around their material all over the place. And they're not really 100% happy with their material. So the, the demo reel, for example. So how do we expect people to remember you if they see a reel that you don't even like or, or to even notice you if, if it's not representing the work that you're capable of doing? You cannot afford it. It's really not professional for you to put out material like that and expect to have some results if it's not what you're capable of delivering, it's, I want to say, I understand the thirst for wanting to work and gaining experience, but it's delusional if you're sending something and you're expecting something else. If you're, if you're not able to be 100% alive, feeling no matter what and every type of emotion, why would you expect people to see something else than what you show them, right? Are you, are you starting to get what I'm saying? Another thing that I see actors do is actually they don't really work on their instrument, um, but then they, and they work kind of semi-consistently, but they're frustrated because they are hoping to get bigger roles and more roles, but they're not putting, again, the work that they could put into their instrument and so when they shoot it's not exceptional it's okay so why would you expect anyone to give you the stuff that you're not even giving you yourself it just it just doesn't work that way it really doesn't if instinct is not a trick a glamorous shiny thing a mask something that you try hard it's none of that it's something that you have is deep inside I know for 99.9% .9 of us, it's inaccessible because you haven't been raised that way. And that's the work you need to do. And that's when you get the crazy, amazing satisfaction and results that come with it. Because that's when casting and the industry goes mad for you. That's when they rewrite for you. That's when you become undeniable and they have to have you. They hunt you down, they, they rewrite, they change the roles, they add the lines, they, they tell the network it's with him or with no one. It happens, it actually happens. And the responsibility is on you. You can make that happen because it's inside of you already. So that's the work you need to do. If you wanna take this discussion further, if you have specific questions about your specific situation, I'm more than happy to um, you know, answer them and start chatting with you guys. And we're going to take all of that discussion in the Instinctive Society Facebook group. All right. See you later, guys. I'll have so if you're interested in this and if this makes sense, if you want to do this work, you can get on our wait list. You click the link below. And as soon as we open enrollment, we'll let you know.